work. Uh, Johnny, what I'd like to do, this is your first program, and we have a lot of people. Maybe we can just hold off asking Johnny questions right now, and then we're going to open up the lines for him. But, Johnny, what I think would be good for your first inaugural program here is may, maybe you could just explain to some of the people uh, we have a lot coming in, and we want to welcome you all coming into jo Johnny's first program here. Uh, I think you're going to find it really interesting. Uh, Johnny, is a, at least he says he is a Bethelite. Uh, many on here believe he is. I believe he is. Some don't believe he's for real. But, but Johnny, uh, wh why don't you do this for us? Well, why don't you let us know? Give us a little background on you. And uh, you don't have to say where you came from. I know you don't want them to start a witch hunt there at Bethel. But g give a little background on your life and, and let us know uh, what's going on. I mean, a lot of people are hearing this for the first time. So we are going to be having this program pretty much on a weekly basis. They, they want to know a little bit about you. So go ahead. Uh, fill us in. Um, well, okay. Um, I was brought up and raised in um, the, uh, the East Coast, uh, New York, um, from a well-off family. I was brought up in the truth. Um, thought from the beginning of my birth that I was destined to go to Bethel because that's what my family wanted me to do. Fortunately, I, um, at the uh, age of 13, figured out that that was not my calling and wanted something different. So I went through my teenage years, as everyone calls it, my knucklehead years, and was in the world um, for, you know, my teenage years. Um, after my teenage years, um, I decided to come back out of, out of the wish of my mother, who uh, at the time was a very sick woman. Um, but she recovered and was fine, but she said that she wanted, you know, her sons and she wanted all her sons and, and daughters in Bethel and um, serving God. And, you know, I, like an idiot, um, like an idiot, I gave up everything to do that. I gave up uh, schooling. I gave up, you know, college. I gave up, you know, I, I had, you know, a free, uh, free ride, even though, we you know, I didn't need, we didn't come from well, I come from well-off family, but I had a free ride you know, to, to NYU, and I wanted to pursue medicine. That's always been a passion of mine, um, you know. Um, but it's uh, it, it was amazing to me because even when going through the motions of becoming a Bethelite, I um, thought with all my heart that Bethel would be the place that you could go to ask questions, to and to enlighten yourself, to ask the questions that maybe others can't, are scared to ask, like why, you know, never in a million years did I think it would be the final period, you know, or the, the tyrannical place that it has become. I always thought that it would be the, the house of God, literally, you know, you know, the house of, you know, of everything that Jehovah was. And then certain things happened in my life which started to change my uh, mind. Um, I was put first um, on the IT team right away, and we went on um, hacking into people's Facebook accounts, email accounts, um, spying on uh, different uh, websites that were found to be apostates, um, spying on people's Facebook accounts, seeing if they were, you know, inciting any apostate thinking and informing their local elders on them. Also, we were to do the same thing when it came to people's emails and email accounts. Um, since I excelled in that, I was put in a high position when it came to the IT team. Um, also, personally in my life, that was one thing that bothered me, but also um, because of that, uh, things that I chose to do and uh, I chose to go to Bethel, it also cost me a loved one uh, which I'm not afraid to say about it because not a lot of people know about it but it cost me my fiance who was dead because of it um, and um, one day doing what I did uh, best, which was, you know, hacking and looking, I found uh, Rick's website, The Six Greens, listened to his disfellowshipping, listened to his appeal, 
and as always, it was a pinnacle. It was a, basically a whole bunch of things at one time. Um, at one time, but then the you know the the, the spark to the fire was listening to the disfellowshipping and seeing that nothing was being used from the Bible. Nothing was being used from the Acts, even from even from the you know your, your elders' handbook wasn't. Nothing was being used. You know they disfellowshipped Rick's wife without her being present, which I I think is a is is, is demonic, in my view, in order to use your authority to disfellowship someone in general. Anyway, for me, I think it's demonic. But to disfellowship uh, someone who can't even appear because they're sick. It, for me, it's, 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 it was you know it was it was the end for me. It was literally the end for me. So literally, I was very upset. So I started to listen to the six screens, and um, one day I decided to talk and expose things from the watchtower that were going on, and everything which in those people who are out there who say that I am not from Bethel, who say that I'm Rick's son, who say that I'm a space alien or something, or that I'm in a bunker somewhere. Everything that I have told you has come to pass in the past year that I've been here. Every single thing that I've warned you has been proven to be true. Not one thing has I, that I've said has been not proven to be true when it comes to the Watchtower. And right now, what the biggest thing that we're hoping for is for the fall of the Watchtower. And, well, not the fall of the Watchtower, but the fall of its leaders and the reformation of all things that they consider doctrinal. So that's basically mm. who I am, what I am, and what's been going on. Well, Johnny, and, uh, you're bringing so many people in here tonight. I have to tell you something. 